guys, it's John from TheReproductiveGarden.com and today we're going to talk about maintaining your worm farm. Now, you may have watched the video that I've already done on making the worm farm where I made this worm farm. If you haven't seen it, then just click on the link that I'll put here and you'll be able to go and see that video on how to make that worm farm. But what we're going to do today is we're going to be doing a bit of maintenance on the worm farm. Now, general daily maintenance things are things like adding your food scraps and stuff to the bin which I'll talk about a bit later on of course you just have to keep it moist and as long as the food scraps that you're putting in are, are moist you'll generally have enough moisture in the um, in the worm farm as long as the days aren't too hot you'll have enough moisture but sometimes if things start to dry out then you just need to add a little sprinkle, sprinkle of water just to keep things nice and moist so that, so that the worms are happy now things that you do have to do regularly to keep the worm farm going are, is, are of course add food scraps okay so when we add the food scraps this lid like I said in when in making the video clips on to keep um, pests and stuff rodents and that sort of stuff out okay we take this off now I've just got a little hessian sack which I keep on top and as long as that's moist then things will be pretty right so you judge your, you judge your moisture level just by just put a little worm back in there just by how this cover on top now whether you use a hessian sack or some other sort of cloth some people use carpet or although i'm not very happy with that because of the synthetic um, problems and whatever pollutions in the carpet from when it was used um, cardboard things like that they're also suitable as well okay now what i'll do i'll just show you what's in here and and what's happening inside the worm farm when i talk about adding the adding the food scraps all right so you can see this is a hessian bag on soft on top these right these things here these little balls that you see on top they're actually egg capsules you can see there's a worm there and you can see these egg capsules here so they're egg capsules that the worms have laid and they'll hatch in time and become a whole lot of of baby worms and we lift this sack up you can see they do eat through the sack from time to time so you'll eventually need to replace those sort of things but you can see there's the scraps I've put in earlier and you can see how they're turning that into to beautiful worm compost vermicasts okay now you'll sometimes you'll get other pests in there you can see I've got some some little flies and stuff in there I don't worry about that too much they don't do um, any damage you can see some you might be able to see some little white worms in there they're just baby worms that have hatched from those eggs so you can see there's a whole lot of life going on in there and I've got a fair few they've been sort of chased down a bit now because of the light if I lift it up at the other end you may see a bit more you can see a few there there's some that's the um, veggie scraps that I put in yesterday so I tend to alternate one side each day just to keep it fresh for them okay so that's what happens you just lift that up put the veggie scraps underneath and the worms will start working on them pretty quickly okay okay so before they start to hate me too much we'll just put the lid back on here so they're not getting too much sun the worms don't like a terrible lot of sun um, obviously they don't like it because it's going to heat them up and dry them out and I won't keep this out here too long um, because they don't like being kept in in the sunlight the the worm farm should be kept in a nice shaded spot where it where it can stay nice and cool and I'll show you where I keep my worm farm now this is the cluttered little corner where I keep my worm farm as you can see it's in the shade so it doesn't heat up during the day it's important that these worms stay nice and cool if you let them get too hot then they'll die the other thing we need to do is to make sure that we drain the liquid from the worm farm. Now liquid does build up in the worm farm and it'll drip out the bottom into this bottom container and this valve was put on there for that, for that reason to be able to drain that liquid. So what we do is we just turn this valve on and I get the watering can. We can put this liquid into the watering can. Now it seems like there's a bit more than what there usually is in there because it is pointing down at the moment. Usually it's on a fairly, fairly flat surface where it, um, where it obviously lays flat. Because it's on a downhill, we're going to drain a little bit of extra liquid out, but that's all right. 
and drain it all out and we'll use it on our garden. Now what I do with this is I generally drain out about one litre at a time and mix that into a, this watering can. So you get one litre mixed in with about sort of eight or nine litres of water. So you are watering it down a fair bit. It is, it is pretty good stuff. Okay, so we'll let that drain out. And that'll do now. Okay, and then we just turn the valve off. Okay, now it's important that you do drain it. I drain, I drain this every two, two to three days. Otherwise, if you let the water level drain up, um, go up too much, then you can get um, water building up in the, in the bottom holding container here. If it fills up below the bottom of that, and that can drown the worms. It also makes the vermicast inside this container um, a little bit putrid because they're getting wet and they start um, getting a bit of anaerobic activity in there. So you want to drain this fairly, fairly regularly. Okay, the other thing that happens, as you saw, in the top one it's getting fairly full so now we have to empty out the bottom one and this is the good bit where we get a second use out of the the vermicast or the worm compost where not only have we been able to get liquid out of it for a while now but now we can actually use the vermicast the worm compost that's in here and put some benefit around some of the plants and what i'm going to do now is because my citrus plants are starting to fruit now because it's winter here in australia now I'm going to give them a bit of this, these vermicasts and give them a bit of a, a going while their fruit ripens up. So we'll go and do that. Okay, so when you're changing the bins over on this, what you need to do is you need to lift the three top bins out of the bottom bin. Okay, so we'll do that. These are pretty heavy. Now we'll put them down on the ground. And I'll get the two top bins and I'll put them back into the worm farm. Now what we're going to do now, you can see here that we've got this nice rich worm compost. Now we've got some worms in there. I'm not going to worry, worry, worry terribly much about them because we do have lots of eggs building up. There's worms are breeding all the time so those guys will just go into the garden and They'll do their own thing. If they live in there, that's that's fine. If they don't, then that's it's no it's no big loss. So we'll just go and put this into the garden, spread it around, and when you spread it, you spread it like any other compost. You don't need a whole lot of this. I'll I'll share this amongst some other trees as well. Um, but um, you don't need a whole lot. You just spread it amongst the trees. A bit of a handful under each tree will go a long way in them. So I'll go and do that now. Righto, so I've spread all that worm compost under the, under the trees now. Now what I've done is I've just left a little bit of worm, worm compost in the bottom and basically that just gives them somewhere as they move up into this bin they've already got some worm compost there to, to keep them nice and damp and cool. And what it also does is it stops water building up in the corners, okay, and, um, and possibly drowning like a few of the smaller worms that are in there so I just like just to have a little bit and I mean you can drill holes in there but you'll always get sort of some corner unless you drill it right in the corner where water will build up so just a little bit of worm compost just left in there will help to alleviate that problem okay so we'll take the lid off this top one what we'll do before we put it in we'll just put some new more scraps in there and you can see here I've got some um, silver beet stalks there's a bit of a kale stalk there's some potato peels sweet potato peels banana peels um, that sort of thing now things to add all those any vegetable matters fine um, people say don't add citrus and don't add garlic or onions and things like that I wouldn't recommend putting a lot in, but if a little bit slips into the worm farm, it's not going to do a great deal of damage. I do occasionally like let those sorts of things go in, and they're fine. They eventually do break down. But you wouldn't put a lot in there because it's going to turn the thing acid, and the worms don't really like um, an acid environment. Um, one thing that is good is if you do any juicing, 
the pulp that comes out of the juicing, the worms love it, and because it's broken down, they can eat it really quickly. So you'll get the worm explosion if you're, if you're having trouble getting worms going, then just juicing some stuff and drinking the juice is good for you anyway. But if you juice um, stuff and put the pulp in there, the worms will love it and they'll take off. It'll get them going really well. So what we'll do is we'll put these food scraps in there. Just put them in there and just spread it out. Okay, we'll get the hessian sack and we'll put it down on top of this new one. I'll just break this bit off so I don't pull it all apart. Okay, and then this bin will just go on top of the old one. Now, at the moment, it's a little bit loose um, in the top there, but over time, as the worms break things down and as this gets a little bit more weight in it, it will compress down on top of this one and seal things off a little bit more. Sometimes when you do go to change them over, there can be a bit of a seal, so you might need a little bit of a help breaking the seal. Um, usually the easiest way is if you pull the top one off, That'll take some of the weight out and then pull the second one off and then you can usually get the bottom one off. Okay, so we'll put the top back on. And that's it. This worm farm's ready to go again. Things to remember is to place your worm farm somewhere where it will get shade all the time. You don't want it getting hot, especially most tubs, most worm farms are made of black plastic and that'll absorb the heat really well if there's any sunshine on it. So make sure they stay in the shade. Keep them nice and cool and... Uh, Keep them nice and wet, and that can be easily judged by the covering that you've got, whether it's a hessian sack or cardboard or something like that. If that's nice and damp, then generally the worm farm will be nice and damp. Um, make sure you add food regularly. Once a day is pretty good. Um, if you add it twice a day, it's all right. Don't overfeed them too much. Any extra vegetable matter that I've got goes to my compost bin or to the chooks, depending upon what type of scraps it is. Um, the smaller it is, the better, although I don't worry too much about that. I generally just leave it the way it comes. And make sure you drain the liquid out from the valve regularly, okay? So it doesn't build up too far in here and start drowning the worms that are in the bottom, um, the bottom container. Okay, and as long as you follow those basic guidelines, then you should have some happy worms and you should be continuously getting worm um, I don't know what do you want to call it, worm tea I guess, worm liquid compost out of, the, out of the worm farm and every couple of months you'll get a nice tub of worm compost that you can spread around the bottom of some of your plants. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. I'll put the link on how, you, how I made this worm farm in the bottom bar and that's it for now. So happy productive gardening. See you later.